So let's have a look at some simulations and see what kind of performance we can get from a maximum likelihood sequence estimator. So one thing we know about the maximum likelihood sequence estimator is we need knowledge of the channel in order to exploit it. That is, if we were doing a, a forward error correction, we would have at the transmitter an encoder. And it's the knowledge of the encoder that allows us to have a decoder at the receiver. And it's kind of the same situation when I do maximum likelihood sequence estimation. Again, I have to have knowledge of what are those interdependencies. I'm going to build a structure that lets me exploit them, but I have to know what they are. So I have to know what the channel is. Now, the complexity of the algorithm, it depends on, as I mentioned already, the number of points in the constellation, the channel memory, and uh, for those, uh, I'm going to talk about now some simulation of the MLSE in MATLAB. So MATLAB has a pre-programmed equalizer known as the Maximum Likelihood Sequence Estimator, and it takes and implements a Viterbi algorithm. So you have to tell it what the, the, the actual channel is. So we enter into MATLAB the channel coefficients. We have to have knowledge of the channel. And if we look closely, we also have to tell it what the constellation is. So here are the constellation points. In this case, there are four points, m equal four, and those are the coefficients for QPSK. Now, we also have to know what's the memory length, how long is the, the memory of the channel. And of course, here we can see that we have uh, four coefficients in this um, channel, so that there is an extension of uh, three uh, symbol intervals for the memory of the channel. So once you give this information to MATLAB, what MATLAB does is it builds a trellis, builds a Viterbi algorithm trellis, and the complexity of that trellis is, goes as m to the uh, l minus 1. Uh, it's the number of states which are examined in the uh, Viterbi algorithm. And then it executes a Viterbi algorithm. So we're going to look at some results of simulations for some channels using this tool from MATLAB. So <laughs> the first thing we could look at is what's known as a Butterworth channel. So Butterworth is kind of filter. And if I were to plot this filter in the frequency response, in the frequency domain, what did this filter look like, this Butterworth? I didn't put the equations down, but you can, you can look them up. Well, there's a whole family of Butterworth channels, or Butterworth filters. And depending on the order of those filters, you would get a different kind of frequency response. So you, you can see that the um, response is, is very, very smooth, very, very well behaved for the Butterworth channel. There's a very flat portion and then a gentle roll off and that roll off it's just the slope which varies from one order of the uh, filter to another. So these filters, this is some channels we could completely eliminate the ISI. This is one where we can completely eliminate the ISI. So there's some structure to this um, filter, which means that we get very, very good behavior with this one. And so, in fact, if I were going to plot the bit error rate following equalization of a Butterworth channel, I would actually get uh, the, the theoretical curve. So we have come up with theory. We have come up with expressions for the bit error rate versus signal-to-noise ratio, this EB over N0. We have come up with a, an equation for that, and that's valid only if we're in a channel without ISI. So here is one where we have a channel with ISI. The, uh, if I plotted the bit error rate without equalization, it would be very bad. But the MLSE brings us back down to that prediction. So that's not true for all channels. And let's take another example. Here's a channel where the, freak, the impulse response is given here. So just, you know, maybe stating the obvious, but I'll just draw it out. That's H of T is this uh, frequency, res uh, sorry, impulse response. And remember, these are the channel coefficients, which I'm giving into MATLAB. And MATLAB is using those to build a trellis to understand the interdependencies. So it needs this information in order to work. But remember, there's a Fourier transfer relationship between the impulse response and the frequency response. So if I just take these coefficients, put them into an FFT, I would get this as the frequency response uh, for this channel. Now, 
this scale that I've chosen for this frequency response is such that the um, signal sort of fills up this frequency range. This is the frequency band of the signal. This is the frequency response of the channel that I'm going to pass the signal through. And of course this is narrower than the signal because this main lobe does not fill up the whole area. <laughs> so the whole area is the signal I'm trying to push through and this is something that's copying it. And even more important is that we have some really deep fades here where the channel is almost completely zeroing out, it effectively is zeroing out the uh, signal. So what does that mean? Well, you know, the equalizer cannot perform miracles. If the channel actually cuts off portions of my signal, puts it down to zero, well, it's down to zero, it's gone, and I can't recreate that. So for sure for this channel, I'm not going to completely eliminate the intersymbol interference because I have lost information. There's this information which is lost here, which I cannot recover. So this uh, channel, we're going to uh, run through MATLAB and we'll see what kind of performance uh, we get for this channel. So this is the performance of this channel. Now I have bit error rate versus EB over N0. And these results were generated in MATLAB. In fact, it uses a nice command, a nice demonstration uh, routine in MATLAB called EQ BER demo, equalizer BER demo. And it tests many different kinds of equalizers, equalizers that we'll be discussing. Uh, for now, I'll concentrate on just the results for the MLSE. And so I'll uh, just keep those curves for now. And in yellow is the no ISI. So if I didn't put it through a channel, I put it through a channel which is an all-pass filter, which doesn't change um, my signal at all, I would get the bit error rate from uh, theory. But because I have um, ISI, I have lots of impairments, and if I showed the bit error rate you know, with no equalizer, it like, would be terrible, terrible, terrible. But now I run an equalizer, this extremely complex, high-performance, nonlinear, maximum likelihood sequence estimator, and it does a good job of getting rid of any bit error rate floor from the ISI, still get a nice waterfall curve, but I have 6 dB of loss because this channel has got those deep fades, and those deep fades are unrecoverable, and so although I do get a waterfall, there is a loss for this channel. So in summary, for the maximum likelihood sequence estimator, what are the advantages? Well, it's optimal. It's the best you can do. Um, it's great to know the optimal. It's usually very useful information because if I'm going to look at something that's suboptimal, I would like to know, well, how suboptimal it is. So I can compare the performance I get from a, an easier equalizer and say, well, if it's pretty close, then why would I go to the work to do the optimal one if the suboptimal one is close? So it's a great to have a lower bound for other equalizers. And of course I mentioned there are some where I can completely Im eliminate the ISI. So not only is it optimal, sometimes it's like perfect. So what are the disadvantages over here? Of course the disadvantages are that it is high complexity. For sure that's the disadvantage of MLSE. Sometimes uh, it's just impossible. I mean the, 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 we don't have electronics that can do it in real time. Um, or even in really slow time, if it, it really blows up very fast. Um, also, another disadvantage of using the MLSE is a delay. Because remember, I have to look at all of the sequences, and if the memory is really long, you know, I have to wait. Uh, I can't decide right away. I've got to wait until I accumulate some information about other bits in order to see, you know, what's the best sequence. And there are some applications for which, you know, this kind of output delay would be completely intolerable. Think of, oh, let's say, um, intelligent vehicles, self-driving cars. You know, there's a certain time period for processing that information, and we can't afford delays. So that could be a disadvantage that despite its, its good performance, we wouldn't be able to tolerate uh, the output delay. And of course, I said it requires knowledge of the channel, often the case, but it requires knowledge of the channel. And 
you know, I just here are some things that we can do to sort of counteract the fact that it's a disadvantage. So um, even though I need to know the channel, if I don't know it, well, I can use like a training sequence. I send a sequence of bits where the receiver knows what I sent it, and it can take that knowledge and use that to actually estimate the channel, get an idea of what the channel is doing. Uh, in terms of the complexity, there's another thing I can do here when I'm using my knowledge of the channel is that I can look at the channel and say, well, the memory is like really long, it's like 10. But, you know, when I look at it, eh, I can approximate it by 3, and that would be good enough because the other ones are very, very small and not much energy in them. And so by truncated, truncating my estimated impulse response, I can sort of make the complexity not so bad. So, MLSE has got some great advantages. Big disadvantage is complexity.